Kevin Howell, welcome to Bowman. Thank you very much, Mr. Gordon. <laughs> Archer, Archibald. I, I love those, it's fine. Uh, so you're the founder of the Anchor Group, which is an international business consultancy that's been working with businesses across the Caribbean, but also in the United yes. States. And you say behind this is really just trying to help businesses be better by helping people be better. What do you mean? Right, because behind every business is its people. You could have all the systems in the world, you could have all the technology in the world, but if your people are not equipped, your business can't really do what it needs to do. And I mean, over years, we, we heard that digital is going to replace people, mm -hmm. right? But it can't replace people, because at the end of the day, people relate to people, people buy from people. And so optimizing and ensuring that your people have the skills and the knowledge to do the work, but also the ability to engage with the changing patterns as it were, client needs, staff needs, um, regulations. You really need the flexibility of mind to connect and to help with the transformation that your organization do requires. And, and that's at the core of what, you, what, what, the, yes. what the group does. That's at the core of Which is to help work. to transform businesses, and in particular, um, small and medium-sized businesses, as I understand it. Right, and it's interesting. I mean, oftentimes we work in the U.S. Uh, most small businesses are making. Well, we, we look on five million dollars baseline to about fifty million. So we call that mid cap, um, and that's U.S. Uh, dollars in revenue. So they are pretty much large businesses in many, in like in Jamaica and the Caribbean, right? And so we focus on helping them to craft their strategies and then helping them to execute on those strategies. So oftentimes a consultant comes in and they give you information and say, go figure it out. Yes. Where to start? Mm -hmm. And so we help them to go through that process, whether it be a digital transformation process, whether it be through a staff development process, or it just be through just helping them to center the organization strategy. We are in, we're involved intricately in that work. And a big part of the sectors that you're focusing, you said, are three in particular. So there's energy, climate change, and we have the other. So energy, climate change, and health. And health is the biggest. I mean, we've dabbled a lot in financial services as we were pushing more into the Caribbean region. But we, we find that for us, um, there is a big 20% um, of the US GDP is healthcare. Mm -hmm. So do the math, it's a substantive space and there are a lot of inefficiencies because most healthcare organizations in the US or a lot of the larger ones started as not-for-profit. Yes. And so that philosophy, and then also they are funded by the government. Yes. So the behaviors are not always aligned with kind of capitalist progressive um, businesses in terms of here is my goal, I'm gonna reach programs, yes, but when it comes on to, I'm gonna zero out my, my income, my, my net income at the end of the day, or my surplus versus how do I build surplus so I can expand my program. They're not focused right. as much on the bottom line no. because of their history. Right, it's they're focused on the programs, impacting people, yes. but not understanding that if you want to expand that impact, you have to focus on the bottom line. And that's part of the message that you're also trying to uh, spread as, as you sort of spread the influence of the Anchor Group across the Caribbean as well, and you have projects in the Caribbean. Correct, yes. Yeah. So we have a couple of projects in the Caribbean uh, with financial institutions, actually, um, with energy companies, and also with healthcare. So we are actually designing the public health surveillance system now for the Bahamas. You know, climate change is a big thing, and they have suffered a lot in terms of hurricane and the impacts of climate change. And so the government, through the global climate, um, through the global GCF. Um, the Global Climate Fund. Right. Mm -hmm. And also um, the five Cs, the Cl Caribbean uh, Climate Change Center out of Belize, mm -hmm. is working with the Ministry of Health in the Bahamas to essentially develop a system that is informed by environment and environmental changes and so that they can basically uh, combat early warning signs, as you say, the challenges of finding about some health issues, whether it be vector-borne diseases or airborne diseases late, 
And that means that it's a spread and spread means more money. So catching it early means that you can reduce the impact on a country that is so uh, highly reliant on their tourism product. And, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a, a sort of big deal in the context of what we've seen with COVID-19. Yes. But not just COVID-19, a lot of the, 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 you know, people think of COVID-19 as sort of an anomaly. Mm -hmm. But we've been seeing the trajectory of... Chikungunya. Um, yeah. <laughs> and all the different, um, um, what do you call it, respiratory diseases that have come into the Caribbean over the last several years. And some of them are vector-related. But we don't know. We're not tracking it. And because we're not tracking it, it, caught, it caught, catches up off guard. So one inc an incident, not an incident, it's an incident, but there, we can't see the pattern. And as a result, we can't respond in, our most, in the most efficient way. And you say at the core of all of this, you've been saying is just making people more efficient. And you know, that's interesting to me because it seems to be sort of a, a guiding philosophy of how you work. And I wonder how that links back with your own upbringing as well. And I want to, I want to step there for a second. Um, growing up in downtown Kingston off um, uh, East Queen Street, Street, Blake Road, your mother, to be exact. Blake Road to be, how, how did she sort of, why, why this sort of focus on what people can do and how they can change their own lives? I mean, growing up in a space where you had limited resources, we learned to enjoy each other, right? So the games we play were communal. I mean, go down a manual roll, get a boy, figure a brock, crack stone, mm -hmm. bump, um, on bump on wall. I mean, all these things were a big part of our, and it wasn't just the kids who were involved, the adults were a part of that excitement. And growing up in a tenement yard with multiple families, with multiple realities, for me, um, and having the ability to having stepped out of that space by virtue of my mom being exposed to a different way of life uh, in her earlier years. So she emphasized education and then also starting to go to church when I was uh, about 12, 13, got, got very, very involved in church. Even more, you started to see and learn people uh, because working with church and church people, there are a lot of needs, a lot of realities that you had to understand as a leader uh, in the ministry because it couldn't be judgmental. At the same time, you had to create that balance. So we, I realized over time that everything that I do sort of gravitated to building systems that give this big picture and then de-layer. And oftentimes when an organization builds systems, they think about, does the system work? Mm -hmm. What is the process? Maybe you need some more computers, you need better technology. Correct. But not the people but at not the center. Peter, people, how does the people relate to it? Do, are the people trained to utilize the technology? Do the people know the processes that are in place? And so being able to engage from that lens make a lot of difference. And we call it change management in a lot of respect in this big bucket, but uh, change management is not, a, it, it's not a point in time activity. Change management is something that happens in your business every day because every day you're shifting. And with that shift, it may be different dimension and different magnitude of change management. But if an organization, an HR department, which oftentimes, you know, HR departments aren't seen as valuable in organization except mm -hmm. for hiring and firing and dealing with benefits and compliance versus productivity and performance. I, w I want to talk a little bit more about that sort of impact of your mother because you alluded to it there, um, the fact that she sort of prioritized education and what that meant for you. Right. But it's interesting to me that you are talking so much about change management and all of this because the work that you ended up doing initially was in, in the, the field of accounting and sort of auditing. Right. But we'll get to that after the break. We have to take the break right now. I'm talking to Kevin Howell. He's the founder of the International Business Consultancy the Anchor Group and we are back on the other side of these messages.